What up, gang? It's Ken Zark, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milling, and the villain for the again, and we are back on Face Day Night Remastered. Last episode, y'all saw that fucking nonsense that was going on. Apparently, they've updated the game, so it should be fixed. Um, well, we're, we're about to see right now. Oh my goodness. There we go! I don't know who the hell this is, but... At least it's not that eldritch fucking creature. Hey, it's Tosaka. Good morning. Why oh, that is a grown Tosaka. woman. I'm sorry. Good morning, Miss Fujimura. Yeah, good morning to you. I just love how you're so polite to teachers like me. The strange woman pretends to sob in delight. It may be a bit hard to believe, but this extraordinary affectionate and happy-go-lucky woman is actually a teacher here. Um, is there another way to say good morning? There sure are. The first years all greet me properly. But once they're upperclassmen, they stop using my surname. Don't follow their example, all right? Oh, I'm not quite sure I understand, but I wouldn't be rude to you. Good girl. Oh, how I wish they could be more like you, Tosaka. With a parting wave and a see ya, Miss Fujimura leaves. Fortunately, she isn't my homeroom teacher. Fortunate? She seems like a sweetheart. Miss Fujimura teaches English. Her sunny attitude belies her expert rank in Japanese fencing. Kendo. The fuck? In her student days, they called her the Fuyuki Tiger. I swear it felt like something was in my ear. What the heck? That's the mystery, though. You'd think someone known as a tiger would be feared, not adored, right? Miss Fujimura cheerily heads off in the direction of the archery range. For some reason, she's the faculty advisor to the Kudo Club instead of the Kendo Club. It's just before 7.30. I can see the students doing their club activities on the school grounds, but there's hardly anyone indoors. Except... This fucker! Didn't. Okay, we're finally. Okay. This is where he's actually supposed to show up. Not. Now I'm wondering, like, what did the other characters look like? <laughs> oh my goodness. He always blurts out my name like I did something wrong every time he sees me. Well, if it isn't the student council president, it's a little early for patrolling campus, isn't it? Or are you maybe fixing up the club room? You're diligent as always, not that I give a shit. Hmm. And just what are you doing? You're not even in a club, so why are you here so early? I just felt like it. I'm not an early riser like your family, Ryudo. The student council president's handsome face darkens with suspicion. He seems to have it out for me. I really don't know why. Maybe me saying temples are so dull, past, is what started it. One question for you. Have you been staying late on campus lately, Tosaka? No, I'm in the Go Home Club, you know that. Naturally. As the appointed student council president, I'm well acquainted with all our students' affairs. That's nice. I'm not sure why you bothered asking then. I hope you're not trying to pawn your student council work off the outsiders. Spy on your fellow students yourself. Don't ask me. It's got nothing to do with me. In what way are you an outsider? Don't think I haven't noticed the way you use your wiles to get your hooks into our treasury, you fixin'? Well, that was uncalled for. Me, Suzuri, just asked me to publicize your club budget allocation. Don't the students have a right to know how their funds are being spent? That's all it was to you, was it? The psychological damage you inflicted on the treasurer made her take an entire week off. I shouldn't be surprised to see how, see just how twisted your ethics are. Look who's talking. You ought to keep your staff on a tighter leash. Playing favorites with the cultural clubs doesn't seem fair to me. I know that. That's why I was going to audit them myself. That's Shiro. Right? That's him? Shiro? The, the main character of Fate? Is it? It's fixed, he say. 
Just then, an unexpected visitor makes his presence known. Yeah, Emiya! Yeah, that's him. Oh, sorry, Emiya. You're doing all the work while I'm out here, and I just asked for your help with the repairs. Forgive me. Don't worry about it. Where's the next one? We don't have much time. The AV room, then? The equipment's been acting up for a while, and it finally gave up the ghost. If it's completely broken, I can't fix it. It'd be easier to buy a new one. You're right. But I still appreciate if you take a look. It looks like it's on his deathbed to me. But you might be able to... Oh, what the... Wait, who the fuck am I reading? But you might be able to nurse it back to health. I'm reading him. Might be able to nurse it back to health. Okay, I'll try. Back in by the other student, the president leaves. I stopped thinking during the sudden turn of events. The other boy, wrench and screwdriver in hand, turns as he remembered something. You're early today, Tosaka. He awkwardly mutters and leaves. The fuck? <laughs> what was that supposed to be a greeting? No! What what is that? What? Huh? I'm confused too. The president and the student called Emiya walk off into the distance. That would be Shiro Emiya from class 2C. I hope that's all it was. How do I put it? The wrench looked right at home in his hands, but I'm not sure if it's because it made him look tough or handy. At 7.30 a.m., there was nobody else in the classroom 2A. I take a seat at my desk and flip through my math workbook. There's still 30 minutes until morning homeroom. I've got time to kill until my classmates start arriving. I would have spent that time beating my shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Why did I say that? The classroom is lively as lunch break begins at the fourth period. While school has a cafeteria, so only about half of the students stay in the room. It's mostly girls that stay behind. The girls think the cafeteria is a bit too liberal with the seasoning, so... What the fuck is this? She looks like a sweetheart! Um, Tosaka, would you like to have lunch with me? I would love to have lunch with you. We girls tend to enjoy our lunches as groups. I'm sorry, Saigusa, but thanks for asking. I'll be eating at the cafeteria today. I overslept this morning, so I didn't have time to make lunch. Um, of course. Sorry for ambushing you like that. Saigusa looks guiltily at her feet. No, don't look guilty. Shut the fuck up. Don't look guilty, you're a sweetheart. I would love to have lunch with you, but I'm don't, I don't got lunch, I didn't bring lunch. Among the refined and well-behaved students of class A, she's the most dem dem demure, whatever the fuck that means. For some reason, she's really nice to me. There's nothing to apologize for. I just didn't have time to make lunch today. Please ask me again tomorrow. I let her down as gently as I can and offer a genuine smile. Okay, so even you sleep in too, huh? Perhaps my smile made her feel better. Saigusa turns back to her table looking relieved. She's adorable. She is adorable. Yukika Saigusa isn't drop dead gorgeous, but her smile always puts everyone around her at ease. It does happen. I don't let it show, but I'm really not a morning person. I can't get up early enough to be in any clubs. Taigusa somehow maintains an elegant air even when startled. Watching her reactions is always so calming, but that doesn't mean I have time to just stand here and talk. If I keep up a conversation with someone so disarming, the real me is bound to show herself. I'm off to the cafeteria then. Enjoy your lunch. You too, Tosuka. What a sweetheart. Taigusa and I exchange some graceful greetings, and she returns to her friends. I see that she's eating with Kaede Makidera and Kane. Nigga, Kane? Kane? We got the fucking the, the, the wrestler from hell in here? And Kane Himura. Alright, wasn't Saigusa the track and field club manager? Makidera and Himuro are in the track and field club. Are the track. Fuck. Ma Maki, fuck. Fuck. Makidera and Himuro are the track and field club's rising stars. Maki Dara is a bad influence with whom I go window shopping on days off. 
But I don't know Himuro too well. <laughs> Looks like you got dumped, bitch! <laughs> Told you that Tosa could to bring lunch! You want a hooker, you gotta bring enough food for both of you. Maki, can we just go to the cafeteria with her too then? Oh, she got... Nah, it's too cramped in there to share space with us brown baggers. Plus, it's really annoying how the boys stare, at, stare when you sit next to Tosaka. Last time we hung up, she hogged all the attention. She's an overachiever and all swanky too. I can't take it. <laughs> she... <laughs> Maki Dara takes hold of Saigusa's desk as she continues to rant about me. Despite her foul mouth, she actually wears a kimono really well. Like a picturesque Japanese beauty. The fuck does that have to do with anything? Maki no G. Lady Tosaka can hear everything you're saying. Meanwhile, Himura's cool and solid demeanor are at complete foil to that of Maki Dara. Oh shit! Did she hear me? Ugh. I bet she's totally glaring at me. Uh, I, I don't think she's glaring at you. She's totally shooting lasers. It's the scariest when she's smiling at you. Oh, come on. Just let her slide. We're pals, remember? Come on, come on. I traded you to Taiyaki that one time. Come on, you, you fuck with me. Kaede Makidera puffs her cheeks out in a pout. P fuck! Kaede Makidera puffs her cheeks out in a pout, waving her disposable chopsticks in the air. Would you believe that her hobby is collecting wind chimes? The world works in strange ways. What the? What type of hobby is that? No offense if that's your hobby, but a nigga like me, well fuck, honestly, my hobby is just making YouTube videos and listening to music, so <laughs> I don't really have any hobbies, huh? At any rate, it's rude to Saigusa to stare at the three of them. Caught between me and the foul mouth Makidera, Saigusa looks like she doesn't know what to do with herself. It's alright, Saigusa. And Makidera, I was the one who treated you. To crepes, not Taiyaki. You really ought to fix how often you work in hyperbole. Shut your ass up! That smile scares the daylights out of me. Mikey Dara holds up a lunchbox lit like it's some kind of shield. I bid the odd trio farewell, leave the classroom, and slide the door closed. Oops! Ah, uh, give me a break. Taiyaki crepes? What's the difference? They're both sweet things wrapped in carbs. Maki Dara utters something blasphemous for a girl. Hold on, I can't let that shit slide. We gotta scrap, nigga. We gotta scrap. I ain't letting that slide, bitch. She, she thinks Taiyaki and crepes are the same? Is this bitch stupid? Is she even human? Are all desserts the same to her? If I know that her taste buds can't distinguish Fleur's 500 yen very, very berry from an 80 yen Taiyaki at Edomaya, uh, damn you, Kaede Makidera. I could have saved 420 yen. Wow, what am I getting actually upset for? I must still be tired from last night. Why am I getting mad? I need to just kill the bitch and be done with it. The cafeteria sounds like a pain, so I'll just buy some bread from the counter and eat on the roof. Real shit. I used to eat Doritos for lunch. I purchased my lunch and head to the unoccupied roof. Though it's different in the summertime, during the winter, the roof is a convenient place to eat that other students tend to avoid. It's too cold to hang out here during lunch, but that's a small price to pay for privacy. Time to eat. I indulge in a tomato sandwich and hot lemon drink I brought from the cafeteria. Nasty fuck, a tomato sandwich? You nasty bitch. It's a simple lunch, made all the more delicious by the fact I can enjoy it up here in peace. Whew. I finish a sandwich and sip on the warm, lemony drink. I'm a little tired. It's hard to balance being an overachiever with avoiding human contact as much as possible. As the saying goes, one should be accomplished at both the pen and the sword. It's a point of pride, no, conviction, that I'd be the top student of the school. I decided that if I was gonna be a student, then now would be the very best. I don't want people looking down on that Tosaka name. 
That's how Rento Saga came to be a perfect, flawless student. On the other hand, my occupation as a mage is dangerous, so I shouldn't associate too much with normal people. When a mage is discovered by the public, she has no choice but to eliminate witnesses to protect herself. I'd rather not resort to that. That's why I keep my social interactions purely superficial, out of necessity. I only hang around with Maki Dara on my days off, and I turn down invitations from the more, from the more sociable people like Saigusa. It's difficult walking the tightrope of being the number one student at school, while making sure I don't become anyone else's number one. And sure, there are times when it tires me out and I feel like it's a real drag. Ah, oh, fuck, it's already time? I finish the hot lemon drink and, dr and stand up. That's enough sentimentality to, for today. Time to go back style to become Rento Saka again. Who the fuck is this? Yo, this nigga scared the fuck out of me. He look, he look evil. He look like he gonna, he look like he gonna beat my ass. This nigga scary. This, he's a villain, bro. He look like he gonna pull up on me and just start beating my shit in. Pause. Homeroom is over. Make sure you log your day shifts and lock the doors and windows. If you don't have any club activities, try to get home quickly. Class 2A's teacher gives his usual spiel and leaves the room. As far as I know, he said it exactly the same way all year. This is that, um, Mitsuzuri bitch, right? Not bitch, I like her. Tosaka, you're going home already? Yeah, I had a run with Mato this morning, so I want to leave before it gets out of hand. I figured. He sure had a temper this morning. You must have put him through the ringer. Did he now? Sorry for the trouble. It wasn't really. Mato's always hard on the younger students. It helps them build character. Glad to hear it. I'll make it up to you later. Sure, sure. I hope it doesn't put you off. Stop by again sometime. I make my way home without taking any detours. My time as Rento Saka the Honor Student ends once I leave the school. Next half of the day is reserved for the other me. I have to become a mage of the Tosaka. When I arrive back at the house, I'm greeted with the pulsing light of my answering machine. Voicemail? That's rare. Figures it's Kire. I think I know who that is. I have a feeling I know what he's gonna say, but I'd better listen or I won't hear the end of it later. I press the play button to hear a familiar male voice. Yeah, I, th yeah, I think I know who Kire is. I think I remember him. From from Fate Zero, right? If if people haven't seen Fate, I'm not gonna say nothing about what goes on in Fate Zero, or or what I saw in Stay Night. But yeah, I think I think I saw him in Fate Zero. It's me, as I'm sure you're aware. Tomorrow was a time limit, Ren. We will have a problem if you procrastinate any further. There are only two spots left, dumb bitch. I must ensure all the masters are in order soon. The priest cuts straight to the point. If you plan to forfeit your rights as a master, let me know by today. It will take time to dispatch a substitute mage. Liar. I bet you can find a backup right away. You have already shown signs of a command spell. Promptly summon your servant and bind them to it now! Of course, it's a different discussion if you choose not to take part in the Holy Grail War. If you fear for your life, then come to the church with all due haste. The voicemail ends. It was a clear message in simple language. If you're gonna fight, then be ready by today. If you aren't, then retire, because you're in the way. Bars. I don't need you to tell me that. It's only to be expected, I guess. Today's the last day I can drag this out. Thankfully, I managed to decipher father's notes yesterday. My battle preparations are in order. All that's left is to seize the rider to participate, as he said. The Holy Grail War. A fight to the death over a single chalice. 
a ritual that's gone on for centuries. The mages who take part in the Holy Grail War are called Masters. It doesn't denote a rank of any kind, it merely describes their role. It is a condition to participate in the Holy Grail War. You must summon a familiar called a servant and form a contract with them. Regardless of your skill as a mage, you are not recognized as a master unless you command a servant. There's a clear difference between servants and normal familiars. The way you summon, fuck, the way you summon and use them are different. Mages who plan to fight in the Holy Grail War prepare summoning catas catalysts, but I wish father had left me something with a connection to a saber. I don't own any relics with a connection to a servant. I can summon one, yes. In fact, if I do it right now, I could do it right now if I wanted to, as well as form a contract. The town's ley lines are under the jurisdiction of the Tosaka. I'm the heir to a clan that's administered to the that's administered the land for generations, so my performance will not take the back seat of some visiting mage. Although, while that is true, it'd be awfully incompetent of me to embark on a figurative voyage without a compass. Servants are drawn to symbols. To summon a powerful servant, one needs a symbol with a connection to that servant. In other words, I need some outrageously valuable item, like a sword or piece of armor the servant owned, or maybe a bone or a heraldry related to them. I had such big hopes for father's will. No, he still did leave me a serious trump card. The pendant I discovered in the basement last night is an ancient artifact of the highest quality. It's amazing all on its own. Still, it won't help me summon a servant. Fine. I don't need to rely on something like that to figure this out. To begin with, I doubt there's any master more qualified to handle Saber than I am. <laughs> she don't know. <laughs> she don't know. Should I tell her? Should I tell her? Should I tell her? Alright, I've made up my mind. I'd rather not get another earful and waiting until the last moment doesn't sit right with me. Now the real challenge begins. Tonight I'm going to summon a servant while I'm in peak condition and acquire Saber by force. Should I tell her? The fuck was that? Late night. The clock reads almost 2 a.m. This is the period where everything lines up. My condition peaks at 2 a.m. sharp. In terms of limits, this will be my first and last chance, so I can't afford to make even the slightest mistake. Withdrawal within elimination. Engrave four circles of withdrawal and surround them with the summoning circle. There. I inscribe magic circles into the floor of the basement. Actually, it doesn't take a major evocation to call forth a servant. Servants are invited by the Holy Grail. Masters anchor them to the world and supply their magical energy to materialize them. But the servants are the ones who choose to respond to the summons. Ah, oh, that's fucking cool as hell. For the element silver and iron, for the foundation stone and archduke of Pax, for the ancestor, my great master Schweinard. Raise a wall for the raise fuck. Raise a wall for the wind that shall fall. Close the fuck. For the element silver and iron, for the foundation stone and archduke of Pax, for the ancestor, my great master Schweinard. Raise a wall for the wind that shall fall. Close the gate to the four directions. Come forth. The crown cup fuck come forth from the crown and follow the fourth road leading to the kingdom. Still, I need to keep cautious and focus. Magic circles are normally drawn by blood, but tonight I draw mine with the melted jewels. I'm using up half the jewels I've accumulated over my lifetime. So I'll never financial I'll never financially recover if this fails. Fill, close, fill, close, fill, close, fill, close. Repeat five times. But when Nietzsche is filled, destroy it. It's almost 2 a.m. I finished drawing the summoning circle passed down through the Tosaka line and faced it with all my being. Anfang. The fuck? 
I flick a formless switch within myself. With a click, I feel my insides turn over to something else. My normal nerves invert and become circuits of her conducting magical energy. Ren Tosaka is no longer human. She's just a component in the execution of mystics. I melt from my fingers. No, I'm filled up from my fingers. The mana I'm taking in is so dense it overwrites my bodily sensations. That's why I'm being destroyed at the same time I'm being filled. Running through my body is the power, mana, from the atmosphere. I convert it into a different type of energy through my body circuits. A mage's body is nothing but circuits. Oh, that's hard! Circuits that can actually eat through to the material. The mystic's outcome, fuck! The mystical outcome we produce is what we call magecraft. My body grows hot. It seems like horns are growing from my forehead. It seems like wings are sprouting from my back. It seems like scales are covering my hands. It feels like there's water pooling around my ankles. Sweat drips, stab, stab, swords pierce my body. These are the stake of matter that reject my body, which becomes a circuit. No matter how gifted a mage is, we're only human. In a human body, the pain is something we must live with whenever we use magecraft. The cycle doesn't let up. Beyond the agony deep within the trance lies a mental state necessary for connection. Pain wriggles in my left arm. To aid the caster, my magic crest autonomously begins an incantation, invading my nervous system. The mind in the atmosphere I've taken in turns to blood. It's like molten lead. While my activated magic crest resembles thorny nerves, with a crunching sensation that creeps throughout my body like a thorny centipede. Within the hurt, I forget myself. At the same time, I can feel it taking hold of me. I've reached where my I've reached where I need to go. My hypersensitive hearing picks up the ticking clock in the parlor. Ten minutes left till 2 a.m. Ten seconds, nigga. The power filling my body is unquestionably complete. Heed my words. Time to begin. I convert the mana I've collected into magical energy for fixation. All that's left is to feed all that energy into the engine, the summoning circle, until my body runs dry. Heed my words. My will creates your body, and your sword creates my destiny. If you heed the grail's call and obey my will and reason, then answer me. My vision goes dark. What lies before me is the fifth factor, said to be the imperceptible to the naked eye. My vision shuts off on its own, fearing what it might see. I hereby swear, I shall be all the good in the world. I shall defeat all evil in the world. Seven heavens clad in three great words of power. Come forth, the circle of binding. Guardian of the Scales! That went off without the hitch! It feels so perfect. It's like I'm reeling in a whale with a fishing rod. Flawless! I'm positive I just drew the strongest card. I can't wait for my vision to return. I'll take a few more seconds, but when it does, I'm sure it'll be the, the strongest servant will. Be nowhere in sight. Huh? Nothing's there. The room doesn't look different at all. I spun that much ether into this ritual, only for absolutely nothing to materialize. On top of that, what the fuck? I think I just heard something explode in the parlor. Why? Why? I bolt. I My head's empty at this point. I just run. I race up the stairs from the basement. The door's broken? Damn! We got fucking intruders! Them young niggas done broke in! The door to the parlor is askew off its hinges. There isn't any point in turning the doorknob. And since it won't open whether I push or pull... Damn it! Move, you stupid fucking thing! I kick it down and burst into the room. And... The moment I enter the parlor, everything becomes clear. 
Who the who the fuck is this? They done let one of them young niggas in. Everything is in tatters. Rubble is strewn across everything, as if something has fallen through the ceiling. On top of all of it sits a man cocking his head arrogantly. He must be some kind of criminal. You saying that because he's black? But something graver draws my attention. This nigga's fitted the fuck up. Damn, that fit is hard. Also, the grandfather clock having escaped destruction tells the time precisely. Now I remember. Right, of course. The clocks were an hour ahead today, weren't they? Which means it's 1 a.m. Still a full hour left until I'm at peak spellcast form. I fucked up again. I can complete tasks as well as anybody else, but I suffer from the curse of my genetics. When it really counts, I somehow manage to bungle things on an unbelievable level. What's done is done. Just gotta learn from this. I can't believe my own stupidity. Still irritated, I direct my glare at the man lounging haughtily on the rubble. So, who the fuck are you? That's the first thing out of your mouth? I seem to have been dealt a truly ridiculous master. The man in a red mantle shakes his head in a show of, in a show of exasperation. To add insult to injury, he mutters something about drawing the short straw. Shut your ass up! You fall through my fucking roof and fuck up my living room! I ought to use a damn... I know how these fucking tattoos work. I ought to use one of these ta damn tattoos and make you kill yourself, bitch! Oh, now I'm dead certain. This guy has a messed up personality. And is this a servant? I thought familiars were shapeless beings, but this is just a man. No, not just a man. Even from here, I can tell it's brimming with a shocking amount of magical energy. Don't be fooled by its appearance. I'm staring at something that's undoubtedly more than human. It's a human-shaped ghost. That's on the level of an elemental. This is no time to be dumbstruck. That thing belongs to me. I need to get my head in the game. Just checking, but you are my servant, right? That's what I wanted to ask. Are you even my master? I've never been summoned so violently before. And honestly, I'm struggling to get my bearing. Hey, it's my first time too. I'm not answering questions like that. I see. But you weren't here when I was summoned. Care to explain why? Are you serious? You're no baby bird. Don't joke that you can't decide who to serve if they weren't there when you open your eyes. The unidentified servant frowns and a grunt escapes his lips. Maybe he didn't like the way I said it, though he has a mixed reaction as if he's impressed by the logic in my words. Whatever. What I'm asking is if you're my servant and no one else's. I don't have time to answer any of your questions until we make that clear. This is what I get after a failed summoning, huh? I believe there's something else we should be saying. There isn't. In a master familiar relationship, this is the first detail we need to hash out. Chop, chop, get to it, little nigga. The servant's eyebrow twitches. He isn't even bothering to hide his dissatisfaction with me. I wonder if it's because of the half-baked summoning. You want to clarify who serves whom? At least you know how to run your mouth, even if you failed at nothing else. Even if you failed at everything else. Sure, I agree with that opinion. We ought to make clear who's strong and who's weak, or else it'll make this dynamic difficult. The servant eyes me meaningfully, still relaxing on the rubble of, leaving, of my living room. Who's weak? Yeah, I'm a servant, and I'll acknowledge that I serve my summoner. But that's only how it is on paper, wouldn't you say? We still need to establish who's superior, and whether you're worthy to fight alongside. On that point, are you a maze worthy of my service, little bitch? The servant smirks. First he destroys my house, and acts like he's the king of the castle. And now he has the nerve to ask, then the, the, the nerve to ask whether I'm worthy. I didn't ask for your opinion, nigga. I only ask if you're my servant or not, so chop chop and fucking answer. I repeat myself, stealing my gaze. 
I'm not gonna back down from this condescending bitch, nigga. Oh, I see. You won't even deign to answer such an obvious question. At least you've got spirit. You can talk the talk, but can you walk it like you talk it? No Drizzy, no, no Drizzy Drake. Like I said, you getting ahead of yourself, motherfucker. It's the summoner's dirty fuck. It's the summoner's duty to confirm this first. Now answer me. Are you my servant or not? I step forward aggressively, ready to pounce, depending on his answer. Such a stubborn little girl. We'll get nowhere at this rate. Very well. For discussion's sake, let's assume I am your servant. In that case, are you my master? Hypothetically speaking, of course. Nigga, yes! You're the servant I summoned, so who else would it be? I glare at this rude man, giving my seething head a moment to cool down. Oh, well, I guess I would be, hypothetically. Then, where's the proof that you're my master? The servant blithely asks, murking all the while. He's clearly trying to goad me with these questions and losing my temper. Right here, this proves that I'm your master. I show him the command spells on my right hand. Hmm. Don't think I was born yesterday. Father's told me enough that I need to, enough that I know what command spells are at least. Good enough for you yet? Any other complaints? I thrust the symbols at him and challenge, but the lounging servant rolls his eyes. Are you serious right now, girl? His face darkens, looking even more disgruntled. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the way you think. Command spells automatically make you my master? They're merely, they're merely tools to compel a servant. I can't believe you think flaunting some symbols is enough to play master. What I want to see is whether you deserve my loyal service. Oh, you fuckhead. That makes sense. When normally you think of command spells, if you think of command spells if someone asks for proof you're, you're a master, right? What, you think I'm unqualified to be your master? I wish that were the case. But unfortunately, your command spells show that you summoned me. As hard as it is to believe, you appear to be my master. He shrugs in mock exhaustion. Fuck you! You know, broke my shit. I've reached my boiling point, and I'm not gonna cool down in time. I'm hardly satisfied, but I'll concede the point. For now, you're my master, but I have conditions. I'm not gonna do what you say. I'll decide the direction of battle, and you'll act as how I see fit. Who the fuck is this nigga talking to me like this? Hey, command spell. Kill yourself, nigga. This is the greatest concession I can give you. I'm sure you don't mind, girl. <sighs> Sorry, father. I'm at my limit. Okay. You're saying you'll recognize me, even though you don't like it, but you'll ignore my opinions. Aren't you supposed to be my servant? I ask in a trembling voice. After I spat over the command spell, this, this is my last desperate attempt at dialogue. And yet, yes, technically. Therefore, I'll obey you, in theory. But I'm the one who'll be fighting. You can just hide underground in your house and behave until the Holy Grail War is over. That way, even a novice like you will survive. He's looking down on me, declaring that he expects nothing from me. Did I make you angry? Of course, I respect your position. I was summoned to bring my master victory after all. My victories will belong to you, as will any spoils of war. You hardly have anything to complain about. Oh. You can't even use those, those command spells. Just leave the rest to me and worry about your own skin. Oh shit. I've had it with you! Fine! If that's how this is gonna be, then I'll use them! I'm fine! No more mercy! I've got nothing left! Nothing else left for a jackass like this! What? Don't tell me. It's exactly what you're thinking, bitch! Vertron, I hereby invoke my command spell. I'm your Nagel. I'm news guest in accordance with the laws of the Holy Grail. I'm news verbatim. 
bid my cyber in absolute obedience. Kill yourself, nigga. You it. Wait, have you lost your mind, master? Who would waste a spell on something like this? Shut up, nigga. You're my servant, get it? That means you have absolutely have to do what I say. The emblem on my right hand aches. Three command spells. They allow a ma they allow they allow a master to issue three unbreakable commands to their servants. D did you even think this through? If you use a command spell in such a vague order, ah, it's too late to whine now. I didn't expect this to happen either. I want to die of self-loathing. I can't believe I burned one of my precious command spells on a petty squabble. After that, I retreated from the ruins of the parlor and went to my bedroom. Before me stands a servant whom my command spells compelled absolute obedience from. Supposedly, anyway. I see. I more or less have you figured out, Master. Who would call this absolute obedience? Just to be clear, do you understand how critical the command spells are, Master? Sure I do! They allow me to order my servant around three times, what about it? Listen, command spells let you force a servant into action. You can use them not only to stop action, but also strengthen them. For example, normally I can't come to you instantly from a distant location. But if you order me with a command spell, it's possible as long as it's something that is obtainable with our magical energy. That's what the power of force compliance means. Not even we servants can resist. Your command spells are three crystallizations of grand magecraft that allow us to overcome our bodily limits, though you're down to two now. I know that! So what, I still have two more? Not like the first order was wasted on you. You're right, I did miscalculate. The more vague the order is, the more power of the command spell diminishes. The weaker on long-lasting broad commands like protect me until the end or win this war for me. The compulsion will be sustained, but there will be servants who can resist the minor pain of disobedience. On the other hand, singular commands like unleash your next attack at all costs or do not break that glass or absolute, and even powerful servants will find it difficult to defy them. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you, Master? Yes, you're saying vague commands are pointless. If the effect and restriction are both weak, then the, then the servants can act against their command spells. It's better to use them on simple, straightforward orders rather than something abstract. That's correct. A command spell is meant to cause miracles beyond our own means. It's unforgivably foolish to spend them on a task that could be executed by other means. That goes doubly for the way you used it earlier. You could have verbally persuaded me to obey you, and even a and even hundred command spells would have failed to enforce absolute obedience. So you're saying it was all for nothing? Normally that would be the case, but it appears that you are an outstandingly talented mage. Is he shocked or happy? My servant's lips twitch upwards even as he sighs. By outstanding, you mean... Hang on! Tell me honestly what your addition is like right now. The implication dawns on me as I ask eagerly. That was my miscalculation. Your command should have resulted in a change of heart that would make me want to respect your opinion slightly more. But I can feel a strong compulsion from your every word. If I voice an objection, let me think. It's, in my defiance if, uh, it's, it's as if my defiance would weaken me. In other words, my body grows heavy, making it difficult to move if I defy my master's will. My servant struggles in resignation. So he's saying that my command spell wasn't a waste, but an actual benefit. He's still being as sarcastic as ever, so it doesn't seem to have any effect. Besides, even if he's weakened, I doubt even 10 of me could resist, it, resist if he decided to rebel against me. Allow me to retract my previous statement, Master. You may be young, but you are a superior mage. It was my mistake for underestimating you as a child and trying to keep you out of the fight. I apologize for my rudeness. The servant strains his posture and gives me a formal bow. Bow. 
wait, hold on. I know we said a lot of things to each other, but it's not like we need to make up after. Is that so? Good, I'm glad you're so understanding. Awfully quick on the uptake, aren't you? I indeed miscalculated, but this must be what they call a happy accident. I have no qualms bringing a maze of your talents into the war. Is this his roundabout way of saying I'm a strong master? So you'll recognize me as your master even without the command spells? Of course. I was still getting my bearings after the summoning earlier, but we're now completely connected. As a maid, you should be able to feel the bond of our pact. Our pact? Now that he mentions it, something does feel weird about my body. It's as if my closed off nerves are not connected to the outside. Specifically, I can feel a portion of my magical energy flowing to the man before me. The Holy Grail calls us servants, but the masters keep them in the world. Yes, that's your power as a master. You supply your servant with the magical energy so that they remain in the world. And my supply is adequate. I have concerns about your experience, but your powers will make up for it. A common maze would faint the second they summon a servant, yet you're standing here full of life. Considering the command spell you used earlier, your energy, your energy capacity unquestionably makes you the master of the finest caliber. Uh, Flattery won't get you anywhere. <laughs> I break eye contact out of embarrassment. <laughs> Hold on, let me do that soon. Direct. <laughs> Stop. Well, I didn't see this coming. I know the command spell is making him obey me, but still, this superhuman servant is sincerely acknowledging me as his master. So, which servant are you? I clear my head and return to business. You can't tell by looking? Very well then. I take it all back. He's definitely making fun of me. Fine, then I'm asking you as your master. Aren't you Saber? Unfortunately, I am not equipped with a sword. I suspected as much. When all said and done, I got the time wrong. My summoning circle didn't do its job and my servant was spat out in some random room. It was far too sloppy of a ritual to summon the strongest servant, Saber. I really botched it this time. I'll never live down failing to pull Saber after spinning that many gems. Sorry that I'm not Saber. Huh? Well, sure, it's a painful mistake, but I'm the only one who screwed up. Yes, I bet you think Archer is in a very attractive class. All right, then. I'll make you eat those words. When the time comes, I won't be taking any apologies. What? What a surprise. The unidentified servant seems to be sulking. Maybe my fixed saber on sight, my, my fixation on saber offended him. That strike a nerve, Archer? It did. Just you watch. I'll show you how lucky you are to have me. Archer retorts with a sidelong glance. He has a really spiteful air about him. But that reaction felt somehow childish and free of malice. You know, he might be a pretty decent guy. Okay, make sure I regret what I said, Archer. I'll apologize from the bottom of my heart if so. You'd better remember that, Master. You'll be grateful once you learn how capable I am. Of course, an apology might not satisfy me at that point. Archer huffs, even if it's ev fuck. Archer huffs, even if it fuck. Archer huffs even as his lips twist into a grin. Oh yeah, this one's got a rotten personality, all right. Fine. Anyway, you're a heroic spirit. So where's your legend originally from? Archer doesn't answer. His sardonic expression is replaced by a deepening frown. Archer, your master just asked you a question. It's a secret. I can't tell you where I'm from because... Hey, I'll get mad if you give me a lame excuse. Well, there's that face again. Archer opens and closes his mouth as if he's having trouble voicing an uncomfortable truth. Because I don't know. Wait, what? Huh? Are you making fun of me again? I don't mean to insult you. But it must be because of the imperfect summoning. My memories are jumbled. I know who I am, but my name and origins are a haze. Still, it isn't valuable information, so there's no need for concern. 
Of course I'm concerned. If I don't know which heroic spirit are you, how am I supposed to know how strong you are? And what's the problem? That's a trivial question. There you go again. How am I supposed to form a strategy if I can't tell how strong my partner is? We can't win a war like this. Bro, locked in. What do you mean? I'm the servant that you summon. Naturally, that makes me the strongest. He's so straightforward. The Crimson Knight fixes his gaze with a full with full of confidence and trust. What? My brain grinds to a halt. There's no deception in Archer's words. He's sincerely giving me more credit than I deserve, even though we've just met. My cheeks are burning. Oh, I'm sure I'm blushing red right now. Surprise attacks like this tend to be my weakness. Fine then. At least nobody else knows who you are. They say you have to fool your allies to fool your enemies. I turn away from Archer to hide my embarrassment. I'm sure I'll figure out in due time what sort of servant he is anyway. But now we have other priorities. Okay, I won't ask about your identity for the time being. Then Archer, here's your first job. Jumping straight to it, are we? I guess you're an aggressive type. Where's the... Before he says, before he can say enemy, I toss a broom and dustpan at him. Go clean up the mess you made. A few seconds pass in stunned silence. When Archer finally regains his senses, he grips the broom indignantly. Wait, what exactly do you think a servant is? Nigga, a servant is a servant! Now you have fucked up my fucking living room! Go clean that shit! I'm familiar, right? A little upwarding and hard to deal with, though. Archer cuts himself off. I have no intention of letting him off. And if he tries to wheeze a lot of it, I still have a card to play. I object. I refuse to. Are you sure? This is a direct order from your master. I thought you said you'd feel weighed down if you went against me. It's too bad if that's too much for you to handle. But the penalty will continue until the parlor is clean, you know. Won't that pose a risk to you when we start fighting tomorrow? He stands there for several more seconds with a broom in hand, grumbling under his breath. And so, Archer with the red mantle, Archer in the red mantle closes his eyes. Understood. Go to hell, master. And gracefully accepts my order. Now then, it's getting late, so I should rest. I can decide how to deal with this nigga once I wake up. Uh, uh. Oh, there we go. My fault, I had to twist the cap up. A faithful day draws. A faithful day draws to a close. No, rather, my fate was shaped by this night. Fate. That makes six, including me. Once the seventh and final master summons their servant, the Holy Grail War of this generation will begin. In the not so distant future, the battle I've been waiting ten long years for is about to commence. Is that the prologue? That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read them all tap into the next one. I'm gonna go on the end of the episode here because I like I like shit organized and I didn't know it went by days. So I'ma have to I'm not gonna take down the first video, no. I'ma just change the thumbnail to say like day one, and then I'm gonna make this thumbnail be like day 1.5. And, and some shit like that. So and next episode is gonna be all of day two. If possible, I want like, you know, I just like order. I like order, you know? I want each day to be an episode if that's possible. So I'm gonna go in and end this now and I'm gonna pick up tomorrow. But peace out, I love y'all, tap into the next one. Man, hold on, I'm about to pull the shit up. Bear with me.
Look at this. Y'all fucked with the first episode that heavy? Seriously? Seriously, y'all fucked with the first episode that heavy? Was it because of me? Oh, is it because of the goofy ass glitches? Uh, look, let me know. But, like I this is my first time ever seeing your fate. Not my first time, but fuck, I already explained this shit in the first episode. If you watch it, you'll know. But, peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. I hope y'all keep watching. And I hope y'all stick with me through my, um, my journey through these visual novels. Really excited to get into more of these. And I'm gonna upload this today. But, I'll probably... I'm probably gonna keep trying to upload Fate as daily as possible, but at the same time, I will also be doing Tsukihime. So if I do upload Fate tomorrow, you can expect a Tsukihime double upload for the, the first episode of Tsukihime. Hope y'all are hope y'all hope y'all are excited for that. Peace out. I love y'all.